All right. Welcome, welcome. See people streaming in here. Thank you for joining us. My name is Shanuka. It's 10.01. We're going to give a few more people to just get signed in here. We have almost 100 people on the call today, so I want to make sure everyone gets a chance to, to log in. All right. Good to see some awesome members. Bailey, Betsy, Aaron. Good to see all of you. Tammy. Okay. Let's just give everyone another two to three minutes here. And then we'll get started. I know it's early for some of us <laughs> falling in across Canada. We have <laughs> such a variety of time zones. Some people are eight o'clock, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 and noon. Who else do we have here? Hi, Emma, good to see you. And Tammy. Great. All right, well, let's get started. And if people stream in, that's completely fine. Uh, it's good to see everyone on the call. Um, my name is Shanuka, if you missed that. And um, I'm the I'm an awesome program manager at the Saskatchewan Food Center. Um, and I'm gonna be your MC today. We're gonna have a great session learning about the capabilities of uh, the different food centers across, the di different food development centers across um, the Prairie Provinces. And, um, you know, the reason why Awesome was able to put this panel together of, of resources across the, the prairies is because our program is a cross provincial program. And so we definitely value and prioritize interprovincial resources. Uh, we have a small population over a geographically large landmass. And so it's really important that as a food manufacturer, you know what the country can offer you, not just your province or your or your city, the whole the whole country, because there's different capabilities, different opportunities. So before you make any big decisions when it comes to co-packing or processing, it is important that you do your research and figure out, you know, what is out there, sorry, what is out there, and also not just in the now, but later on, right? Because the I'm assuming that most of you want to to grow and eventually distribute to different locations and you know, picking strategic co-manufacturers is a huge part of that, okay? So <clears throat> to kick us off, I just wanna go through, I'll just, we have four, four speakers today. Uh, so that's gonna be amazing. Um, and I'll introduce them in a second. But before I just want to spend five minutes going over some general tips when it comes to working with a co-packer that many of our uh, awesome members have shared with us and we've picked up over the last several years. So the first tip is, or the first piece of advice is, remember that not all co-packers are the same. Um, each co-packer pursues different food safety licenses and therefore has different equipment and uh, different processing lines. Um, and, and as a result of that, they employ different staff and grow different knowledge bases. You know, we know food is infinite in its possibilities, and it's impossible for one center to know everything about every product. And even if they, you know, most of the food centers on the call today will process everything or they'll, you know, help you develop everything. But still, there's probably an unofficial knowledge hub for each center and not just not just the 
uh, you know, publicly funded centers, but also there's tons of private co-packers out there too, a handful of them. Um, and it's the same deal. You know, they, they pick a particular product line and they employ people who are um, technicians of that particular type of equipment and they grow their knowledge base and their food safety licensing because of the type of products that they can manufacture. Um, so for example, like some, some facilities are skilled in packing meat or processing meat, pet food, carbonated beverages, baked goods. You can see how all those things are extremely different in terms of their processing, in terms of their processing. So naturally each co-packer is going to be skilled in a specific area. It doesn't mean they can't do what you want them to do. It just means that they're going to be skilled in a particular area. The second thing is <laughs> the difference between cooperation and competitiveness. I see this a lot. Um, you know, I understand that we're dealing with proprietary formulas and special ingredients and, and all these things. But if you're looking, especially when you're a startup, if you're looking for help, if you're looking for technical support and information, you do kind of, you do need to share your secrets and you do need to bring people in um, into those, you know, those special details of your formula, because that's going to help food scientists and processors provide you with a better product. And I understand, like I said, I understand you don't like those things are close to your heart, but there's ways to legally protect yourself through non-disclosure agreements, non-competitive agreements, and other kinds of vendor vendor or service agreements, legal agreements. And often the center itself or the, the develop the manufacturer themselves will also protect their staff and their clients and all that stuff. They'll also make probably make you sign an NDA. So everyone's protected. So just remember that when you're seeking information and you're trying to develop the product, trying to grow the business, you do need to be cautiously open when it comes to sharing or when it comes to divulging or exposing certain information. I'm not saying tell everyone. <laughs> I'm not saying tell everyone, but people who are there to help you, you can provide them with specific specific information to move those goals forward. So just it's just a note on you know, there's ways to legally protect yourself when you're working with third parties when it comes to your formulas and intellectual property. <laughs> and then the third one is that the communication on your part as the food as the food owner, as the food brand owner is critical. Um, every It feels like every center in Canada or in the world is extremely busy. Seems like food processing has gone through a bit of an evolution these last few years. And, uh, you know, your foods, the food scientists that you're talking to, their inboxes are full. They're full, full, full. And if you're not there to follow up or, you know, I'm not saying be aggressive, but um, maybe be assertively aggressive in your pursuit. If you if you haven't heard back in a couple of weeks, follow up. It's okay. You can call them. You can pick up the phone. You can email. You know, they're dealing with sometimes thousands of clients, thousands of businesses, brands, products. Um, and if you want to get some work done, sometimes you have to be, I'm not saying it's it's right or wrong or whatever. I'm just saying, if you want to accomplish those goals, you need to be the active communicator. Um, and I don't, I feel like I don't see that enough, especially when it comes to women entrepreneurs. Um, maybe we're just scared or we're patient. I'm right? like, oh, you know, they'll get back to us. They're probably busy. No, <laughs> you can go ahead and be a CEO and, and get that communication done. You can be patient. I'm not saying don't be patient and be, you know, don't be obnoxious about it, but you know, a lot of the times I hear clients come to the awesome program and say, Hey, you know, I haven't heard from whoever, whoever I'm like, okay, we'll call them, <laughs> call them. They probably, you know, that it's probably on their to-do list to get back to you. And if you're on a, on a type, tight timeline and you need things done, let's communicate that. Okay. So those are my three, three tips to kick us off. Hopefully I wasn't too harsh. <laughs> But the world of food processing is, it's fast and it's fickle and it's a little cruel. It can be a little cruel sometimes. So yeah, I, I want to make sure that, you know, after this conversation, everyone's has a realistic, um, you know, perspective on food manufacturing, co-packing in Canada, um, and that you have some maybe action items that you can do for your own products, your own businesses. Okay. So let's get started. As I mentioned, we have four speakers today. Uh, Michelle Sigvelson from Leduc, the Alberta Food Center, Carmen Lee from the Saskatchewan Food Center, Robin Young from the Manitoba Food Center, and then we have Elena Gomez-Harrow from the Prairie Research Kitchen in Manitoba. And then we'll wrap up 
with uh, a group Q&A. Okay, so feel free to send your questions at any point in the presentation. Uh, the speakers probably won't get to your questions during their during their segment. We'll probably save all the questions for uh, the Q and A segment. Okay, but feel free to as you have the questions, send them. Uh, myself and my colleague Bryn will uh, keep track of all the questions. All right. Okay. Uh, all right. So Michelle. Welcome, welcome. I've been working with Michelle since I've been at Awesome and she's been um, been great. She's been absolutely wonderful to work with. And um, I've heard great things about the Alberta Food Processing Center through our awesome clients. So Michelle is the director of the Food Science and Development Section at Alberta's Food Processing Development Center in the Ministry of Agriculture and Irrigation. After working in the private sector, sorry, private food industry for 19 years in the area of product development, Michelle joined the Food Processing Center in 2013. She joined the center when she joined the center, she had moved from a sensory scientist position to a management role. As director of the food science and development section, she has the privilege to work alongside food scientists, technologists, business development officers, and value-added industry stakeholders as the team collectively contributes to the growth and commercialization of food companies in local and global markets. Michelle studied at the University of Alberta where she obtained a Bachelor of Science and a Master's of Agriculture degree in Nutrition and Food Science. Outside of the Food Processing Development Center, Michelle enjoys being physically active or quietly reading a good book when she's not cheering for the Oilers. <laughs> awesome. Take it away, Michelle. Thanks for joining us today. All right. Thank you. Can everyone hear me okay? Shinuka, can you hear yes. me? Okay, perfect. Thank you. Well, this is a fabulous way for me to start my morning. So thank you very much for the invitation to be here today. And thank you to the awesome program and the team for coordinating today's webinar. It's a pleasure to be part of sharing as part of the panel, sharing what different supports there are across the prairies to help our value add processing industry. So as Shanuka mentioned, my name is Michelle Sigvoldson. I'm the director of the Food Science and Development section, which really means I get to work closely with these food scientists and our business development team who are working closely with small and medium companies and entrepreneurs, maybe such as yourself, on their journeys. The picture that you can see on the screen is a picture of the uh, Food Processing Development Center in Leduc. And Originally, it was much smaller. Uh, the original build started in 1984, and the funds were from the province's Heritage Trust Fund at the time, with the vision that this facility would be supporting primary agriculture and facilitating the growth of that value-add industry. So we weren't always exporting those primary commodities. Let's add value here. Over the years, the facility has gone under a number of different expansions. Uh, the Food Processing Development Center is the front half of the picture, and it's about 65,000 square feet. And I'm going to carry on. Within our branch, we actually have three centers of excellence. We like to, to refer these facilities as, um, one being the Food Processing Development Center, um, also attached to our facility is the agri-value processing business incubator. And that's in the far back of that picture that's on your left. Um, the agri-value processing business incubator is certainly areas where suites, the companies can come in and lease, um, and then they have that access for 24 seven. We're currently undergoing an expansion of that incubator space that you can see in the back corner as well. In addition, we have a very similar type processing support with our bioprocessing innovation center. They do much what we do, but they're using those primary agricultural ingredients for non-food applications. So maybe it's cosmetics, natural health products, maybe it's uh, car parts using hemp. They get to work on some really cool things as well, again, with that focus in being non-food. So our branch mission is certainly to increase that value add processing capacity um, through that combination of expertise, specialized facilities, product and process development, interim processing, incubation, business services, all with the goal to foster commercialize companies help with that so that they can serve local and global markets. 
what we offer. We offer that product process development. Uh, companies, uh, entrepreneurs can come in, work with our food scientist, work with the equipment that we have in the facility on maybe bench top, um, small scale product process development. Maybe they're looking to scale up, going from that certain size that they're already working in a commercial kitchen and they're making that next volume step. How can we help them scale up? Maybe they're looking to do that scale up in the pilot plant or move into interim processing where they're manufacturing their product for sale out of the facility here. Interim processing can look very different for different companies. Um, it could be as little as one day a month or every six months, up to 10 days per month for one company, if we have the space available. Um, we are under this inspection of the Canadian Food Inspection Agency, and as companies can apply for their own Safe Food for Canadian license to operate out of the facility, they could then manufacture their product for sale out of the facility and ship it outside of the province and outside of the country if they choose. Companies may choose to just continue to sell their product within the province of Alberta, and that's fine too. Uh, companies that work at the facility, they maybe sell their product at farmers markets, retail, food service, online, business to business. Our team of scientists will also work with industry on industry-led research. Um, we also have our business development team that works one-on-one -on -one with companies, and we offer some knowledge transfer opportunities through missions and workshops. Our team, food scientists, of course, um, technologists, food safety specialists, we have a maintenance team, business development officers, and management and administration. And about um, two years ago, I would say, we were really in a situation where about a third of our scientific resources, those positions were vacant. We had a number of retirements as, at the same time as we had a secondment. So there was a time where people were reaching out to us and we were feeling we were at capacity with the resources we had. I'm pleased to say that we are back up to a full complement of our product and process development scientists. So hopefully now we're able to, to help more companies with their, with their asks. Our business development officers, this team, they do provide one-on-one -on -one coaching for the companies that we are supporting out of the center here and those companies that are working out of the agri-value processing business incubator. We work with those companies one-on-one. -on -one. What are their needs that they need? Perhaps we're helping assist them with identifying programs, services, resources, or connections that are specially focused on their requirements, what they're looking for to grow. In addition, this team will lead uh, the development and delivery of public and group business development events, missions, workshops, for example. The various innovation and technology specializations, we do have protein extraction capacity in our pilot plant for both dry and wet extraction. Um, we also have a very busy wet processing area where we have a number of different kettles, different sizes, we have a bottling line. And in this line, in addition to that, we can be bringing in different pieces of equipment, whether it's slicers, dicers, homogenizers that might be used in the manufacture of the product that goes down that bottling line. For example, if it is a condiment, a salsa, jams, beverages. This line, as you can see in the picture, we can handle glass jars, uh, plastic bottles, plastic pails of different sizes. Just to give an idea of um, volume for this area, we could maybe process around 2,400 jars of about a 500 mil jar, if you're looking for that as a ballpark, or if it's a 250 mil jar, we're close to, closer to around that 3,400 jars per day. Of course, that's subject to the formulation, but it gives you an idea of ballpark. Pop up, let's get rid of that, all right. We also have um, various meat processing equipment. Now we say meat processing, but often the same equipment can be used for um, plant-based alternatives to meat, to meat products. We have different size patty formers if you're looking for product and process development and or larger ones if you're looking to manufacture product for sale. We also have various grinders, injectors, tumblers, stuffers, silent cutters of different sizes, again, so that you can work with your product development, as well as there's an opportunity for manufacturing for sale. 
we do have a full forming cooking freezing line. And within that line, we customize it based on the product that the company is looking to manufacture. If we're looking to set up uh, meatballs on the front end, or maybe it's a chicken nugget, um, we want it to maybe go through a deep fryer, or as seen in the picture here, there's a two stage um, oven, which leads then into a spiral freezer. And then the product would go into a separate room for packaging. Companies that are utilizing this line are typically producing their product for sale just with the size of that equipment. A uniqueness of the Food Processing Development Center here in Leduc is that we do have a high pressure processing unit. And that unit is really helpful for those companies that are looking to evaluate this type of technology for their product in the R&D phases. So this cold pasteurization, we may say, um, is a non-thermal food and beverage preservation method that enhances food safety as well as increases the shelf life while preserving that original or close to original flavor, color, and texture and nutritional properties without applying any thermal processing. We have a small spray dryer for supporting our product and process development. Um, if we're looking to do that in those plant, that plant protein extraction area, but we have much, much more. Um, the list of what we can't do is shorter than what we can do. Um, we don't have a retort. We don't have, we're not able to do carbonized canning of beverages. We don't handle peanuts in the pilot plant. But then everything else, let's have a conversation. Maybe we can and we can't help you. Let's, let's find out. Um, we have a complement of bakery, not only expertise, but various pieces of equipment. We have a bar forming line, um, as well as cookie former. And so different pieces like that, we can pull together and see what we can do. We do a lot of confectionery development with gummies, caramels, chocolates. So don't see a big machine right here that, that shows that we can do that, but we do have that expertise here. And we're super excited to say we're finally um, going to be receiving a high moisture extrusion die that we've been waiting for years to try and get that piece of equipment here. And we are having that come um, soon in the spring. So steps, steps to success, steps for working with the Food Processing Development Center. Well, it all starts when you reach out to us, whether it's through a phone call, via email, perhaps you're filling out the application form online and sending that in. Once we receive your inquiry, then we're going to be having you connect with a scientist and a business development officer. The business development officer is going to be having conversations to understand where you're at in your business, what resources and links we might be able to provide to help you in, along your way. The scientist is gonna be talking to you about what's the technical challenge that you're looking to do or what's the processing that you want to achieve. And they'll further flesh that out with you. you know, do we have the right equipment? Do we have the right resources? How can we help you? And maybe some of that discussion is we're giving you some information back and you're going back and you're doing some further trials on your own and or maybe there's some homework that you wanna do before coming to the Food Processing Development Center and really actively getting involved. Once those conversations have been moving forward, the scientists and the business development officer will move your application to the Management Project Review Committee. And that committee is looking holistically at the application. Do we have the people resources? Do we have the space capacity resources with our current commitments? can we take this application on at this time? And if the answer is yes, then we sign a service agreement with you and we get the work going. As you can see for the fee schedule, bench top um, development work, the fee working with the scientist for that is 350 a day. Now that scientist may work on the, de the development with or without you present. Our preference always is for you to be present if possible, but sometimes that scientist will work on it um, under your direction, but without you being here. Pilot plant product development, that's when we're moving into that pilot plant space and the fee does go up to $500 per day when we're in that space. Interim processing, and this is when a company is looking to come in and manufacture their product for sale. That might be $500 to $1,200 per processing day. And it really depends on the amount of equipment space that a company would be taking as to when that price is being set. But in addition to that facility fee, there's other charges. The cleaning, 
for at the end of the day, that is cleaned by a third party and that cleaning is billed back to the company at $25 per cleaning hour. And we do have some areas, when we looked at that, that forming, um, processing, freezing line, the cleaning in that area could exceed the facility fee charge if it was set to $500. So the cleaning is charged back, as well as any hands that are needed to manufacture your product. Those hands are going to be employees of yours. Um, we don't co-pack. We're not a toll processor. We're providing you the facility, the equipment, and some of our processing technologists and a scientist to help you with that production for that day. But any additional hands are, are your employees. And that could be your own employees, your families, friends. Um, and there's a local labor pool in Leduc that's very familiar with the facility that you can reach out to to ask them, can you come in and work for me for a day, two days, whatever that might be. So those additional costs, as well, of course, as your packaging and your raw material costs are built on top of that facility fee. Technical consultation, that's when one of our scientists will go into your manufacturing facility and work with you there on that product process development or maybe helping you solve a problem on the line. This is a snapshot of some clients that we're currently working with. I'm happy to say some of them you will recognize as awesome members. And I just wanted to touch briefly on the other end of our facility, the Agri-Value Processing Business Incubator, because this really is an opportunity for that next stage. So if a company is working out of the Food Processing Development Center, their volume is growing, they've been manufacturing and selling, and now they're like, we're, we're outgrowing the Food Processing Development Center. We need our own space. Well, the incubator is a multi-tenant facility, again, under Canadian Food Inspection Agency um, inspection, and they're on site every day, and companies can manufacture their own products. So the, the square footage of this area right now, we're going to be up to 100,000 square feet of processing storage in common areas. But now we have seven suites with three brand new suites being completed. That shared shipping and receiving so we do have a shipper receiver on staff that supports the companies working out of this part of the facility. There is that communal raw material and finished goods storage. And here the companies have 24 seven client access. So you have your own suite and the, the fee structure is different. This now, because it is 24 seven, you're engaged in a lease agreement with the facility and companies are looking at that one, two, three, four years um, coming into the facility. And that's a really quick um, high overview of the different services that um, we provide here at the Food Processing Development Center. Thank you, Shanuka. Perfect, thank you so much, Michelle. Um, we have quite a few questions, but like I said, let's keep them for the Q&A and let's keep going. Thank you so much, Michelle. It was great to get an update on what's going on at Leduc. <laughs> Carmen Lee is next, and she is representing the Saskatchewan Food Center. I'm just going to get her online here. Michelle, I'm going to uh, turn you off now. <laughs> Thanks so much. Uh -huh, there we go. All right. So, Carmen, there you are. I'm well, here. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. Carmen is the Food Center's Communication Director. She has worked in the food industry for over 20 years assisting agribusinesses with value added opportunities. Besides developing communication strategies for the food center, Carmen is the first point of contact for prospective clients. Entrepreneurs starting out in the food processing business are usually unaware of where and how to start. So she assists in the pathfinding and aligning um, the appropriate center or the appropriate path or industry services to meet uh, the client's needs. So welcome Carmen and take it away. Thanks, Shanuka. Hello, everybody. Um, are you able to see my screen? Because I don't see a little green thing around my shared screen. Okay, I can see your screen, yep. Okay, perfect, perfect. All right, uh, let's get started. I think we, I have about 10 minutes, so make sure that I want to capture all the time that it's allocated for me. So the Food Center, uh, we're Saskatchewan Food Center. We are a not-for-profit organization. Uh, we were established in 1997 to provide innovation to the agri-food sector. 
uh, we have a strong focus on local crop and meat utilization in the last couple of years. Uh, our focus has been um, more on plant-based foods and ingredient innovation. We have about uh, a little bit over 55 full-time employees that are dedicated to supporting the agri-food sector in Canada and specifically in Saskatchewan. Um, since 1997, we've have developed and processed over a thousand products, providing services to over 450 clients that are from all sectors of the industry. The Food Center's role in the industry lies in these pillars of creating, connecting, collaborating, and commercializing. Our role is to expand and drive innovation by using Saskatchewan agricultural inputs in the development and the processing of plant-based foods and traditional foods. We are here to support entrepreneurship and help to reduce the capital risk by providing the resources to help grow your business. We provide technical expertise and processing capability for test marketing and viability assessment. So a lot of the entrepreneurs do not have to invest in their own facility or equipment in order to launch a food product. We are here to support commercialization of new technology, research and development activities. And we are a pathfinder to, for the industry. We field many inquiries on a daily basis. Over the 20 plus years, we have developed a long list of industry networks that uh, can provide assistance at any stage of your product or any stage of your project. Oops, next page. So we're located in Saskatchewan, but we, our clients are uh, from all over the world and they're all of different sizes from entrepreneurs to multinational companies. Um, you know, as I mentioned, you know, uh, since uh, since we've started, we've catered and provided assistance to over 450 clients. Idea to final product. So we're able to provide the expertise and facility to companies at various stages of their business, from the idea to the final product that is market ready and um, able to be sold in the marketplace. So if you're a startup, and you just have an idea, we can help from uh, to help with fine tuning that idea into a viable uh, product in the marketplace. If you're a farmer and you're looking for value added opportunities, we can also help too as well in terms of finding what are the opportunities that are available for uh, what you're growing and um, be able to look for that market for you. If you're selling at the farmer's market or local stores, but you're interested in, in um, increasing that market share or looking to access uh, more markets, we can help with the recipe, recipe scale up and process development to allow you to process in a larger scale to be able to cater to those markets. And how do we do that? Through our specialized services and expertise at the, that we offer at the Food Center. So, um, as you can tell, we have a lot of expertise in the product development stage, um, extrusion R&D, um, ingredient science and technology. We provide food safety and skills development as well too. Um, new is our fermentation and bioengineering uh, program. We have two special programs, um, the food grade crop quality, which focuses on the evaluation of pulse crop quality to help uh, the development of plant-based sector in the food industry. And of course, our awesome program, which is geared towards uh, advancing uh, women agribusiness owners. We have two processing facilities um, that caters to companies at different stages of their business growth. Between these two facilities, we have certifications that enable clients to ship products to the US and in some cases all over the world. Um, CFI inspected for meat, dairy, processed foods, and honey. Um, Passive certified. We are BRC certified as well in this in our uh, AFIC facility. Organic, halal, kosher, uh, FDA approved for processed foods. Our pilot plant provides the option of daily rental, so um, clients can rent by the day, use our equipment um, or facility or trained operator to be able to manufacture their product for the, and have it shipped out at the end of the day. Our AFIC facility though is a long-term lease or a co-manufacturing facility. You can um, rent one of our suites on a long-term basis and set up your own equipment, um, have your own staff to be processing, you can run five days a week, um, which is uh, perfect for companies that are 
uh, more of a mid to, to larger size, I guess, and they're catering to a large market and um, they're not looking to set up their own facility, but they're interested in, in uh, leasing a suite to, uh, to do their own manufacturing. We have over 200 pieces, probably more uh, now, because this is uh, getting lost count probably a couple of years ago, but we have over 200 plus pieces of diverse flexible equipment to manufacture a variety of food products from meats, fruits and vegetables to condiments and snacks. Uh, we have about five incubation suites available in our AFIC location um, and train operators at both locations to help with the manufacturing of your food product. So let's go into a little bit more detail about some of our uh, unique services and expertise that we offer to the food industry. Um, our ingredient science and technology, we can help to assess new ingredients through various processes such as fractionation, isolation, modification, purification, extraction, um, to uncover their potential and food applications. Maybe you have a, a byproduct. So instead of throwing it away or you know, feeding it to animals, uh, we can help to identify its functionality and uh, propose recommendations and uh, find, um, find a place for it in the marketplace in terms of food product. Um, our ingredient team actually works closely and collaboratively with our product development and extrusion team to, insist, to assist in uh, transforming ingredients into opportunities. Um, they will provide functionality analysis on new ingredients um, and do a, um, um, a thorough examination, I guess, of the ingredient and find food application recommendations for you. Our product development expertise, um, you know, um, this is kind of where the magic happens. Many of our clients usually start with the product, product development um, department. Uh, we have a team of scientists and chef who assist clients with new and improved food products, uh, with uh, clean label product development, um, uh, looking for food applications with your ingredients as well. When a Prototype is finalized, will help with recipe scale up and process development so that uh, you can get a consistent product when it goes from bench top to commercial kitchen. We have um, a seamless trans trans um, transition from uh, the bench top to our pilot plant for that commercial scale up. Our product development team not only works with clients in creating a tasty product, but they also make sure that it meets shelf life, food safety, um, labeling requirements, um, making sure that, you know, the product that you have on the shelf is, uh, is safe for consumers. Um, we also assist with uh, funding applications. Um, we have um, connections and, and network connections, I suppose, with some funding agencies that are able to help you with um, product development um, and to kind of get you started in, in terms of getting your business uh, going. Uh, extrusion R&D to commercialization. So since our initial acquisition of our twin screw extruder in 2018, we've honed our expertise in using extrusion to develop some really innovative food products. We're uniquely set up to develop products on the R&D extruder, and then we transfer that formulation and processing parameters to our production scale extruder for clients that are wanting to sell in retail or food service sectors. Uh, we've used and experimented with many plant-based ingredients, uh, such as pulses, cereal, rice, quinoa, uh, including crickets to create new textures and shapes in the form of snacks, breakfast cereals, and pet food. There is an increasing global demand for plant-based foods, particularly uh, plant protein. We use um, extrusion to create the high moisture meat analogs to be used in the development of the uh, vegetarian meat products to mimic closely to the to mimic closely the texture and the consistency of its protein counterparts. We're sought after for our expertise in this area, and we've uh, successfully helped companies uh, of all sizes, multinationals to local companies develop vegan meat products for the marketplace. Um, our um, product development team works closely with our extrusion team to make sure that um, the 
um, the meat analogs that are, are, are that are developed in our R&D extruder closely mimics the texture of the um, of the real meat counterpart. So just some pictures of uh, some of these delicious vegan meat dishes that our uh, product development team has helped clients develop. Um, we have a chicken stir fry at the top left, pulled pork, uh, chicken pot pie, bottom middle there's a calamari, uh, chicken kebabs, pork ribs, we've done um, as well as sausages as well too. So lots of potential in the plant protein innovations. Um, and we've had lots of uh, expertise in that area and years of experience. So through our two facilities that we offer many options in manufacturing, we have technologies to process meats and vegan meats uh, from sausages, ham, bacon, burgers, um, jerky, uh, to condiments, uh, fruits and vegetables. So we've done lots of fruit juices as well as um, dried fruit, packaging of dried fruit and drying of the fruit, mm -hmm. beverages. Uh, we have a um, tea bag machine that is able to, um, to do tea bags as well as a bottling of juices, snacks. We have a snack line, um, I guess a, a granola type bar line that I'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, we can do dry mixes. Uh, we have equipment to do cheese and dairy processing as well as uh, lots of ready to eat items um, for the marketplace. So this is our equipment for making granola type bars. Um, companies, clients can have access to mixers and kettles to create and um, develop that base formula for the bars. And we have a bar former that presses the um, the mixture into flat, um, uh, flat bar type consistency, and it cuts it into uh, a certain width and length to to uh, to be able to be packaged in our bar into our flow wrapper. We also have access to uh, chocolate and rover. So if you're looking to coat your um, granola type bar into with chocolate or other types of coating, we have that capability as well. Uh, this machine can can do about roughly about five thousand pieces um, in a day. Lots of equipment for sauce and jam processing in both our locations in our pilot plant and our AFIT location. Depending on your needs, we can do between 2,000 to 10,000 jars a day using a piston filler or automated filling line and automatic labeler. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The Food Center Pilot Plant has lots of specialized equipment for meat and alternative meat processing. Um, clients have access to injectors, stuffers, and cutters, and that sort of thing to get their, their product ready. We have access to two smokehouses. One is a drive-through smokehouse, and one is a standalone smokehouse. And when the product is uh, finished cooking and smoking, we have a packaging room that um, has the option of vacuum packaging, a modified atmosphere packaging. We've done bacon, jerky, sausages, pork ribs, burgers, ham, um, any type of meat product. Uh, we've done that in, in, um, in our process room, in our package room. When, um, when using our facility, um, there is a train operator that, uh, that comes along with the rental as well. So uh, we'll be able to help you with your process and uh, be able to get that product out. So this is our, our wheat pack, our vertical small packaging machine. Um, depending on the package size, it can package between 2,500 to 10,000 units from 15 grams to one kilogram weights. Products are automatically weighed out at the top um, and uh, dispensed to the filling tube for packaging in pre-printed film. Um, in this instance, um, clients are, are responsible for uh, getting their own pre-printed film and supplying to the food center for on the day of their packaging and the processing. Our um, other packaging option is in our AFIC location. We have a dedicated drying packaging room that 
um, can package um, in a large scale, uh, roughly about 20,000 packages per day, depending on, on the weight of the product. We've done um, extruded snacks, dry season pulses, breakfast cereals, um, from mini packs to uh, family pack. So food safety is an integral part of food processing, whether it's in your own facility or if you're using the food center, we offer online training in HACCP and uh, good manufacturing practices. The good manufacturing practices is free for Saskatchewan companies. Um, the HACCP and food safety certificate training, uh, there is a, a fee for that one, but um, the online platform allows, uh, allows you to train your employees without having any downtime in your manufacturing. We have a dedicated team that can provide needs assessment, uh, gap analysis. We provide also uh, plant specific training on site uh, as well. Um, our dedicated uh, food safety team provides uh, certification and audit guidance, uh, developing and implementing food safety quality programs, assisting with audit preparation and uh, conducting internal audits. And we field food safety inquiries through phone calls, um, as well as uh, Zoom, Zoom meetings as well too. So if you have any questions in terms of um, uh, food safety um, or you know, initiating a food safety um, program in your own facility, um, our uh, dedicated team is able to, to provide that service for you. So the Advanced Food Ingredient Center, this is an exciting addition to the Food Center. Um, our new AFIC-2, which is under construction, is scheduled to be completed by this year. This new facility will house our fermentation and bioengineering program that started up, um, I think, mid last year. Our fermentation and bioengineering program is, is here to support the development and commercialization of novel functional ingredients. The ingredients and um, whole products that's derived from fermentation can be used for food and food, pet food applications. Um, this program will work closely with our product development team to identify those opportunities with, uh, with food applications. We'll um, serve as a, a contract research organization and a contract manufacturer to help startup companies get into the fermentation um, sector. Uh, will be uh, set up to help uh, companies from ideation to development all the way to commercialization. Mm -hmm. Our infrastructure setup is upstream and downstream processing that's going to be available for the industry. So this one, um, uh, the AFIC-2 will be uh, hopefully done construction by, yeah. by the summer of this year and our fermentation program will be fully operational by, um, by, this, by the end of this year as well too. So in closing, this is my last slide here. Um, the Food Center really is a one-stop shop. Uh, we have everything that you need to take an idea to a finished product that's ready for the marketplace. Uh, we, there was talk about um, you know, confidentiality and IP. Um, once you start initiating a conversation with us, um, client confidentiality is very important for us. So there, we can sign an NDA or a confidentiality agreement to ensure that everything that we talk about in terms of our one-to-one -one meeting or any, of, uh, any ongoing meetings is kept confidential. If the, the project doesn't um, go ahead with the food center, um, the information belongs to you and your recipe and your formulation belongs to you as well too. Um, further to this presentation, we've also up so uploaded some great tour videos that's on our uh, on our website as well as our YouTube channel um, about some of our processing suites I'm, that I mentioned. I encourage you to uh, go on our website or on our YouTube channel to uh, take a look at, at, your, your, at your leisure. If you have any questions um, about what the food center, what the Saskatchewan Food Center is all about and how we can help you get your product idea to market or even just to help you, um, um, you know, grow your business, uh, please give us a call um, and ask the questions. Uh, don't be afraid, ask the questions and we're able to help you. I would love to be able to help you out if we're not able to. We have a uh, large network uh, that we can help um, direct you to as well too. So thank you very much for this opportunity uh, to Shanuka, to the awesome program for, uh, for 
kind of letting letting me to letting me talk about the food center and what we can offer to the industry. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Carmen. Um, is that, I can hear Dan. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I was like, who is that? I was like, it sounds like Dan. <laughs> yeah, thin walls here, thin walls. Um, again, thank you so much for the presentation. Um, really important information. Um, we're going to move on to Robin Young from the Manitoba Food Center in just a second here. Okay, perfect. Uh, Robin, are you there? can't see you. I'm here. My video is slow to start. It looks like it's trying to start. Okay. How about now? There. You got me. Thank you. All right. Well, I'm going to read Robin's uh, bio and then we'll hear from her. So Robin Young is the director of the value added branch of the Man Man of Manitoba Agriculture, which includes a team of business development specialists located across Manitoba to address the needs of food businesses through the growth of their companies. The value added branch also includes the product commercialization consultants at the Food Development Center in Portage La Prairie. Uh, the Manitoba Center was established in 1978 and in its 40 year history has grown into an internationally recognized center of excellence, assisting the agro food industry in the development and commer commercialization of food products with an emphasis on protein ingredients and products to meet the growing protein market. Robin has a wide range of knowledge and experience in the food industry, having worked in the areas of quality assurance, technical marketing, production, environmental management, and continuous improvement prior to joining government. Robin grew up on a farm in Manitoba, and her passion for food and love of, love of science drove her to pursue bachelor's and master's degrees in food science from the University of Manitoba. Amazing. Welcome, Robin. Take it Thank away. You. Thank you. So is my screen showing? Um, you're still in the editing mode. You're not okay. in presentation. There we go. I'm going to put it in presentation mode. There you go. I forgot to see my notes ahead of time. Uh, <laughs> thank you for the opportunity to present about the center. I'm really pleased to be here this morning to talk to you all about uh, kind of what's been going on at FTC. You know, there's been some um, potential questions and kind of question marks around what's going on. So what a good opportunity for us to tell you uh, what we're up to and what the space is. Um, offers and what our team offers to food clients. Um, this is a photo of our beautiful center located in Portage of Prairie. We're just about an hour west of Winnipeg. And as the intro said, we were established in 1978. So in 45 years, we've done a lot, um, a lot of work with clients. And we work on R&D as food products for both domestic and international markets and for clients of all sizes to help you innovate and grow. So there have been some changes at FDC for sure. We are now part of the Department of Agriculture. Um, we recently joined the value added branch and it combines our technical expertise of FDC, the Food Development Center with business development services for the benefit of our clients. Uh, the service provided by the business development team is free. It includes consultation, pathfinding, tools and resources, training and assisting you in finding and accessing funding assistance. The image here shows the recently launched Business Pathways website, which connects food businesses with resources from a variety of organizations serving the agri-food sector, including resources developed by our own branch. The resources are sorted into a variety of um, areas based on the stage of growth of a company. So they're designed to help you with the right tools at the right time on your business pathway. The branch also maintains a co-packer directory for Manitoba, which contains over 50 entries. Uh, the list has recently been relaunched as a GIS map. So before you used to have to read through and kind of look at every single entry and click on the pictures to see what the facility provided. Um, we now have a GIS map. It's really user friendly. You can search by location, but also by type of equipment and the packaging available um, in each of the facilities. You can find out if there's a service available to you in Manitoba that meets your needs. So make sure you take a look at that link. You've likely heard the buzz around protein and the market demand for protein. Global demand for plant-based protein has definitely increased. Uh, Manitoba's own protein industry has become more diverse and innovative. And the government of Manitoba has developed what we're calling the Manitoba Protein Advantage Strategy to position the province to capitalize on current and emerging trends in protein. 
FDC's current research focus is on plant and animal-based protein products and protein ingredients to support the Manitoba Protein Advantages goal of sustainable protein production, protein, uh, protein processing, and innovation. Although FDC has been refocused on the protein opportunity, we still offer the same services in research and development that we always have, and I'll cover those in future slides. For plant protein, uh, we do plant protein extraction to create ingredients. We can create plant protein consumer packaged goods using those ingredients or other ingredients from the market. And we do co-product utilization work. So we create value from products that are remaining after protein extraction. So although you might want your flax protein to be the highlight, we take a look at the resulting fiber. Um, if there's any starch in the product or fat products left over, we can take a look at what value they may have as well as ingredients. For animal protein, we work with meat and poultry, dairy, including cheese and egg products. Uh, we also look at co-products from processing meat. So looking at things like bones and skin and making sure companies can make full use of those if, if that's the desire. And we work with insect protein as well. And we do work with hybrid products. So those products that contain both meat and plant-based protein ingredients blended together uh, that are sold as a source of protein. So you might already be a protein focused company, or you may be asking where the protein trend is relevant to your company. We can help you identify how the protein trend relates to your company by identifying and highlighting protein in your current product and helping you determine how you wanna take advantage of the protein opportunity. Manitoba has seen recent new investments in protein, including in Merit Functional Foods at Roquette and at Highlight. Um, so we see that large industry is exploiting the protein trend and we wanna ensure every company has the opportunity. The research and development services at FDC have been categorized into four overarching areas. We do ingredient development, um, it takes place in our food lab at a bench scale and then is scaled up in our pilot plant. We do product development, which takes place in our food lab. Market access support speaks to our services and ensuring that you can meet regulations. And our supporting platforms include shelf life and sensory testing, which are foundational to food and ingredient development. And I'll further expand on each of these areas in the next slide. For ingredient development, our product development um, team and ingredient process team of engineers, sorry, process engineers, um, can work with any type of raw material and separate it into its component parts. For example, we work with hemp seeds. Uh, we will crush them for the oil, remove the hulls, and take a look at the remaining seed material, each as individual ingredients. We've also worked with waste streams from processing operations. For example, eggshells that are a waste stream of an egg breaking up. Uh, we helped a company to reclaim the calcium from those eggshells, creating a new revenue stream for the company and reducing the footprint of the operation as well. Our facility is licensed under CFIA and holds organic attestation, so organic products can be made here. We do wet protein extraction and drying to create powdered ingredients. We can do ingredient trials, but also modify and improve those ingredients, um, improving their flavor profile or their solubility or their other functionality um, attributes uh, for use as an ingredient in food products. We can create market ready formulations and scalable methods. So you can transfer those to a commercial facility and we can produce test market samples of your ingredients here for uh, a portion of time for a company. Our product development specialist provides product development services for every type of food product, including meat and dairy, as well as meat and dairy um, alternatives or analogs or vegan products. We do bar and bakery items, and we can do beverages and liquid, flu liquid foods, including shelf-stable beverages using our ultra-high temperature pasteurization system. We can also use custom protein blends in your products to appeal to your target customer. And for clients of the center working on product development and ingredient development, we do offer nutritional labeling to ensure that the formulation and product you're working on meets the needs of your target customer. We have really good relationships with ingredient suppliers and technology providers, and we're often using low cost technologies to create meat analogs and alternative protein products. So the cost of entry to come into the market making a vegan product or a meat analog um, is lower when we're using uh, kind of kitchen methods and culinary methods to create those products. For market access, we have um, several services here um, intended to help you meet regulatory um, requirements to get your product into the market. We offer process and program validation to assist you to work with regulators, and we can 
uh, assess your product, your ingredient, and your facility to help you meet regulatory requirements. We can also assist with ongoing program maintenance, um, including review and audits for continued compliance with changing food regulations. The supporting services at FTC include regulatory assistance. We can help you understand what you need to have in your product to make a protein claim or a different type of label claim. We can also help with novel ingredient status and, and uh, petitioning Health Canada for novel ingredient approval. We do sensory evaluation and shelf life testing for companies, which can assist with market access or um, export readiness and trying to ensure that your product is going to be the same quality and same taste profile and color profile um, when it reaches a faraway market. Our on-site lab can analyze for fat, moisture, protein, um, many other things as well. And we also do on-site microbiological safety and quality testing for products. We offer functionality testing, such as solubility and texture analysis, which is key to understanding ingredients and how they will behave in a food system. And we have a variety of equipment to support innovation and commercialization of all types of food products. And we're making some new investments at the center. We've recently been granted some new capital dollars to spend. Um, and as recently as yesterday, we've got new equipment coming in the door, which includes freeze drying technology to help um, with showcasing new applications for ingredients as well. We offer support to advance your company's sustainability as well. Um, we can assist in understanding your waste streams and co-products, we call them co-products with an optimistic view on taking a waste stream and adding value to it. Um, and I can show that in the next slide, kind of our approach. So if your product has a waste stream or a side stream, we can provide waste stream evaluation to determine new uses for your waste stream products. Uh, we ask the questions, what are these products What's in them? What can they do? How might they function as an ingredient in another product? And for example, I've used a picture of a Saskatoon berry that's been broken here into juice and into a powder. Um, our team always investigates the waste streams while we're working on a material. While we have the material in house, we make sure to identify and evaluate what's in the various components of the product. For example, Saskatoon berries contain seeds, which contains oil. We can use our systems to evaluate what type of fatty acids are in the berry seed oil. You may not have enough seeds right now in your production to worry about it, but as you grow, the side stream waste can become substantial and understanding what value it might have will be invaluable to your business. Upcycling waste products for new uses makes good economic sense, but is also the right thing to do to try to ensure every part of your production has a home. And I've used an image of circular economy here to remind us just the interconnectedness of all of us in the value chain. Um, you might not have a use for every stream of your product at this time or ever, but there may be other sectors looking for your product as an input, such as fertilizer, energy, or cosmetic sectors. The table on the right shows that there are a variety of potential uses for your co-products from agriculture and food processing. And by working with us, you can establish the current value of your waste streams and evaluate the possibility of generating revenue, of increasing the value of your products um, you produce and reducing your company's impact on the environment as a result. The research and innovation ecosystem in Manitoba is robust. Uh, we work closely with a lot of partners located in Manitoba, including the Prairie Research Kitchen at Red River College, with Cereals Canada, the Richardson Centre for Food Technology and Research at the University of Manitoba, and the Canadian Centre for Agri-Food Research and Health and Medicine at St. Boniface Hospital, which allows um, clinical trials to be conducted in, in the province using food as medicine. We also work with partners in the federal government, including the National Research Council, and we work closely with our industry associations, Food and Beverage Manitoba, as well as the Bioscience Association of Manitoba to stay connected to clients' needs and always having a future look and kind of forecast coming at us in terms of what center technology and what expertise companies will be looking for. So I put my email address and my phone number up here, so feel free to reach out to me. We also have a generic email address that is monitored every day by our business development team. And our process is that if you send an email, it's triaged, you get connected with the business development specialist um, who would ask you questions, assess your needs, and find out if the center can support you or if there's another technology provider in the province um, that would suit your needs. Also, make sure to check out our new Business Pathways website for connections, tools, and resources that can help your business. We'd really love to help. Perfect. Thank you so much, Robin. Thank you. It was great learning about your center. Um, lots of new things going on there. So 
That's yeah, awesome. Some changes for sure. Yeah. All right. How's everyone doing? <laughs> We're getting through it. Um, day's going by, our morning's going by fast. We have one more speaker and then we'll get uh get get going on the QA. So our last speaker's name is Elena Harrow, Gomez Harrow, and she's coming to us from the Prairie Research Kitchen in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Elena, Elena is the research manager at Prairie Research Kitchen. She holds a master's degree in food science from the University of Manitoba and has had over 15 years of combined work experience in innovation, R&D, quality assurance, and marketing in the academia, provincial government, food industry, and plant science industries. Elena's combined experience in R&D and marketing has given her the ability to liaison and work with different teams, as well as develop over 20 relevant and differentiated products from inception to market, including ice creams and taco shells. Currently, Elena works with a great team at the Prairie Research Kitchen, composed of food, sci food scientists and research chefs, to bring solutions to a wide variety of clients and collaborate with different food research and development centers. Welcome, Elena. Take it away. Hey, thank you for the introduction. Uh, can everybody see my screen well? I, I can't see your screen, no. You cannot? No. Oh, uh, okay. Um, let me try again. This one. Can you see it now? Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so good morning. Thank you both to Awesome for the invitation and to our audience for joining us. I would like to start by respectfully recognizing that Red River College Polytechnic campuses are located on the original lands of the Anishinaabe, Inuinuwak, Anishinaabe, Dakota, and Dene peoples, and homeland of the Red River Metis Nation. And the water that we drink and use at our campuses in Winnipeg comes from Shoal Lake 40. Her research kitchen, uh, also known as PRK, is part of the Red River College Polytechnic, located in its Exchange District campus. We are located on the 11th floor of a historical and beautiful building in downtown Winnipeg. The building is also known as the Patterson Global Foods Institute, and it houses the School of Hospitality and Culinary Arts, as well as facilities to which PRK could also have access to on a project basis manner, including its fine dining restaurant and state-of-the-art labs which is amazing because that gives us much more um, room to do different things and access to different pieces of equipment. PRK is a technology access center. We help clients address their innovation challenges, such as new, such as new product development, new ingredients or extract util utilization and processing improvements by accessing the college's expertise, technology and equipment supported by TAC grants or technology access grants, as we receive base funding from the Natural Sciences and Engineering Research Council of Canada, also known as ENSRI. We are one of the three tasks at the college, and in specific, we have two other ones, which are Technology Access Center for Aerospace and Advanced Manufacturing, also known as TECAM, Building Efficiency Technology Access Center, also known as BTAC, and um, other research areas. So all of us are together working at the pre uh, the um, Red River College, and specifically us, we are the Prairie Research Kitchen. What does this mean for the clients? This means that they would we we can have or help with different funding opportunities. As a technology access center, our mandate is to link the technology that we have or give access to the technology that we have to the community. Uh, our facilities include three different labs. One is the one that you're looking at right now. That's our demo kitchen, which is beautiful, but it's also it also has equipment that resembles equipment that small small to medium sized enterprises might have, or to which they can have have access to easily in commercial kitchens. So we do bench top prototyping, and we use all these pieces of equipment to resemble what you do have access to, even if you're a very small or an entrepreneur, a small size enterprise server, or an entrepreneur, we can help you with what you have in hand or something that could be easily accessible and just to prove your, uh, or try and prove your concepts. Um, we also use this kitchen to demo our products or their products and or to do small sensory tastings. The clients can come in, use the equipment, well, see how we use equipment, use it with us, have demonstrations and training on them. A second lab is our R&D lab, 
for projects that need to be more isolated or need some sort of separation because of the type of ingredients, for example, or the equipment needs or process needs. All our instruments and pieces are on casters, which allows flexibility in our setup. So we can always move things back and forth. We are not an allergen-free facility. However, as an example, this lab could allow us to work on projects that need separation from other ingredients. A third lab is the analytical lab in where we conduct a series of analytical testing. Some examples are pH, moisture, water activity, texture, color, among others, as well as some of microbial testing. PRK have two mandates, or has two mandates, sorry. Uh, one is to provide resources to eligible companies in the form of applied research projects and customized technical services and training. And the second one is to engage the students in industry relevant research projects to introduce them to the food research process. PRK strives to support the training of the next generation of culinary professionals and food developers by engaging college students in different applied research projects. We are a collaborative team that brings a unique blend of food science and culinary arts together to develop solutions for our clients. We combine creativity and culinary knowledge with scientific principles for the development of prototypes, ingredients applications, clinical trial sample preparations, process improvement, and food safety. We also have uh, services of photography and different, different help, like different resources to help you build your business from the marketing aspect to consumer um, studies as well. And that's what makes us very unique. Like um, we, our team being having both expertises, both the food science and the chef driven expertise, it strives on giving responses very, very quickly. Our applied research projects are industry focused and we create new products and processes to support the economic growth of small and medium sized enterprises, which have been success, which we have been successfully at since 2014 at different levels and for different types of clients. Our workforce include, as I mentioned, chefs by trade, college students, and food scientists. Now, these college students could be in culinary arts, photography, business, life sciences, you name it. We partner with different college schools, including the School of Indigenous Education, and this has been a late um, collaboration which has given us great results. Um, focusing on fostering community building, new paths forward, and an exploration of career options for students with indigenous heritage. We work with both the students and instructors who have an indigenous heritage, introducing them to research and applied research projects, such as the development of new products for training traditional foods and dishes. So how do we do all of the above and how are we different? Well, when ideas are born, uh, they usually need to be shaped and sent into the right direction for their success. There are different paths for doing so. In our case, we use our team's expertise for doing, um, for, for having like our expertise, which includes access to 16 different instructors from the college with baking and culinary expertise, as well as instructors in the life science department, including the fermentation area. And we access all these expertise to help with the ideation and prototype steps. Also, standardization and first market, marketing and cell types parts. Furthermore, we have access, as I have mentioned before, to the college's facilities, including their equipment and technicians. We can help our clients with, with this first stage and then eventually help them move forward to the second stage, which is usually the scale up for processing and full packers um, sourcing and labeling. For this step, we don't we don't do it ourselves, but we we help them to get in touch with different partners, such as the Food Development Center, as Robin had mentioned in her presentation. Uh, the Food Development Center in Saskatchewan, um, the Richardson Center for Food Technology and Research and Research, and other colleges, Sales Canada, different partners that we know could help the client. So with that step, we we pretty much match make them. And then after that, once they have a solid product, we can also help to improve it better by either helping on the product launch at different stages with the promotion of them 
with line extensions, with different applications. And this is a very interesting part as well, because most of the times when, they, when a product is sold out there, there is different other food applications that the end consumer can use, but they don't know of it. So we help create, we help find what these products can be used in as, uh, as recipes or as part of someone else's to develop something else in their own kitchen. Let's say if there is a insect powder that is out there and all it has gone through its process of new product launching, that's great. And it's all on retail. Well, when it's on retail, then the final consumer, the one who buys them, wants to apply them in different applications, but they don't know why or how or how it's gonna help how it's gonna develop. So we can help with extending that, that brand and extending those applications in our own kits and then sharing the results with the client, seeing what else is out there that we can use or, and help them with. Um, also, we have uh, large knowledge and connections to the food service industry. And this is also, sometimes it's a business that we don't keep in mind or some of our clients don't keep in mind, but that's a, that's a huge market out there. It's not only, because it would be, it would reach the final consumers, but as part as part of the food service industry, so that we we can also help with. Uh, as I mentioned before, um, our research opportunities are also based on different types of, of funding. Um, so we have different research projects and different service projects, which are funded by the client, and they can they can be any of the the ones that I have mentioned before, also including training and commercializations for services. And we have access to different types of grants. So this would be the answer applied research and development grants. And it could be, we would sit down with a client see what their needs are and see how we can help them develop or enter these grants. So there could be anything from large scale, multi-year applied research projects or smaller projects. For smaller projects, we have the interactive visits. So as a technology access center, also known as TAC, we have access to interactive visits, which is 20 hours technical time. And pretty much the client only needs to pay. So it, it includes 20 hours of our time and facility fees. And the client also pay, only pays the access fee, which is $250. Um, and we are talking about, if we consider those 20 hours, we're talking anything between $35 to $4,500 on a project, and, and that is covered by the grant. The client only pays $250. Um, we, again, we sit down with the client, we see if this is one of the, one of the areas they would be interested on, one of the funding opportunities they would be interested on, and if this fits their needs. Moving on, um, how are we, different again? Well, we're different again because we do applied research. That's our focus. By these, we mean providing efficient and effective solutions to our clients on a bench scale manner, keeping in mind the potential for all ideas to be scaled up at a certain point. So it's not fully isolated, although we do use equipment that it's in our facilities and can be found in any commercial kitchen or in the client's kitchens. We do not just do it for that purpose, unless that's the purpose of the client. We also keep in mind that these products will need to be scaled up at a certain point because obviously our client wants to grow and it's not just an entrepreneur or not small size enterprise anymore. They will move forward with it. Um, so we provide also the training and support for them to keep think of this. Um, and oh, and that is that is pretty much it. I went faster than I thought. So your main contact would be our director, maybe it's my grade. I have her email address right here. You also can have access to our website, which is posted right here, www.rrc.ca slash research kitchen. And you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you very much for your invitation and your attention. Thank you so much, Elena. That was very informative. Um, I'm, we personally, I'm not too familiar with the Prairie Research Kitchen. So it was really great to just learn what you guys do. And it seems like a really fun, interesting place. Thank you. All right, so let's get going on the Q and A. Um, I'm just looking through the Q and A box, and I believe actually most of them are for Leduc. Um, for the participants, if you have any questions for any of the speakers, feel free to either put them in the chat or the Q and A right now, and uh, we'll get them answered. So I have some questions for Leduc to kick us off. Um, I'm gonna see if 
everyone can start their video here. So Michelle, I'm just gonna spitball some questions at you. They're kind of yes or no answers. So uh, hopefully that works. So first question is, is the Leduc Center able to work with pet food? We focus on human food. Um, if the ingredients were um, food grade, human grade, then the answer is yes, we could. At this point time, we're choosing not to. We're choosing to focus all of our activities with um, human consumption food. Awesome, thanks. Um, does the Manitoba Center, Robin, do you get, do you manufacture pet food? Oh, the same answer as Michelle gave in terms of it needing to be human grade um, intended for pet food and, and we will work with that for sure. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. Um, the next question is, does the Leduc Center have a fermentation facility? We do not have a dedicated fermentation facility. We do have some chambers that we can use for fermentation um, and some, some pieces of equipment, but not a dedicated space. Okay. Um, Saskatchewan, Carmen, probably is a better center for that. Right, Carmen? That's right. Yeah, we're, our, I mean, we have a, a little um, set up right now to get our fermentation program um, started until our uh, facility gets, um, completes its construction um, in a couple months, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So the person who is looking for a fermentation facility doesn't, it has some capability, but you're probably, depending on what you're trying to do, Saskatchewan also has some capacities. Yeah. For Leduc, uh, who is the contact person to reach out to for the incubator? For the incubator, if you go on the website for the AgriValue Processing Business Incubator, it's a mouthful. Uh, Dan Graham's contact information is there, and he would be the first point of contact for the incubator. Okay, but people could also message you, Michelle, and you could. Absolutely, yeah. Awesome. Okay. Um, do all of you offer tours of your facilities? Michelle, go ahead. Yes, we do in Leduc. Awesome. And you can just email the center and you'll get a tour set up? Yep. Awesome. Carmen? Tours. Yep. <laughs> Elena? Do you want to yes, we, we do as well. And our tour usually includes the facilities for the college, all, all the labs that we have at this building. If the client wants to see any other facilities, we can also arrange that as well. Awesome. I should mention actually for the tours for the food center, I mean, we do have two facilities, one's located on campus and one is in uh, on Schiller Street. So depending on what uh, what you're interested in in touring. So if it's a general tour, we might do our APIC location. But if you're looking for a specific process and you're looking for interim processing and, you know, really wanting to take a look at some equipment that you may be using for your process, we'll probably do that at the pilot plant. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, what about you, Robin? Yeah, we can offer facility tours for sure. Um, given that we're not offering commercial production anymore, it's a little bit different, but we will still walk you through what equipment is here to do innovation and product development work with and take you through our pilot plant to show you where we do ingredient transformation. Awesome. Perfect. Um, Michelle, this question is specifically for you. S someone's wondering what you were for, something about some high moisture something dye. Oh, Carmen had a great slide that demonstrated what a high moisture extrusion dye can do. And it's using those plant-based starting raw materials to extrude out a product that has more of a texture typical to a meat and an animal protein meat product. So, yeah. So extrusion, high moisture yeah. extrusion. Yeah. yeah, I think like there was a slide in my presentation Sorry. with ribbons there, and then there's some um, pieced out ribbons as well too. So those are kind of like uh, high moisture analogs there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Sorry, I thought that was Michelle's uh, question, but yes, yeah, so it was Carmen. Thanks. Um, is there a charge for business development consultation consultation or further assistance? Uh, Elena, you can start. Yes, so it depends on what the consultation is. If it's kind of like, okay, to get to know some of the programs or get in touch with other um, other 
plan, sorry, with other collaborators or something, we just give that information away. That's not a problem for us because it doesn't really take much of our time. But if the, the, some of the projects are just basically consultation, not hands-on, but just more like literature search or labeling uh, search or whatever else is, is there, we do, we do have to set up a project if it takes longer than just half an hour kind of thing. Great, thanks. Uh, Robin? The, the services provided through our business development team on consultation are free. Awesome, thanks. Thank you, Carmen. Um, ours is free as well too. So the initial consultation and uh, project discussion is free. Um, there is a charge as soon as we start to initiate a, um, a product development project or a processing um, contract. But um, you know, before, or prior to, and just you know, just having that conversation and finding out what our services are and what your requirements are, that's all free for sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, and Michelle. Similarly, business development discussions, there's no charge associated with those business development discussions. That one-on-one -on -one interaction really is targeted for companies that are working at the facility. We do have regular discussions with um, somebody that might reach out to us, but we might not do that digger, deeper dive with the general inquiries that come in, but all of those discussions are free. Okay, awesome. And just a... a Something to follow up on a note um, through the Awesome Center or through the Awesome Program. Sorry, we do offer business development consultation to women entrepreneurs or businesses that have majority women owners. Um, and when you are coping, I mean, a lot of our clients when they are engaging, starting to engage in a co-packing relationship, often they have to do some market research and business make some business decisions before. So you know. A lot of the times a co-packer might ask you, okay, well, it, well, volume is number one. Like how much are we producing? They're not going to, I mean, they want to protect you too. They want to make sure you're able to sell the product. So if you're saying, okay, I want to make a thousand units, but you don't know if you can act, you don't have a sales distribution channel, or you don't actually know if you can sell those thousand bottles. You know, you should know that you should be confident that you can sell the product that your co-man is going to manufacture for you before engaging in the relationship. You should be sure in your sales funnels and your volumes and you know your goals and your timelines, and that'll help the co-packer. So yes, so in terms of business start, in terms of business development, come to you come to us and we can work through some of that market research with you and you know any stats that you have might have or data that you might have in your business regarding sales and quantity and consumer data, you know, we can sort through that and kind of make a plan for what's the next step with the co-packer. And then also for women entrepreneurs, each of you, each center, each province has a women entrepreneur center. And they more often than not will offer free uh, business development advice. If you have a membership or a relationship with them, they're nonprofit funded by the federal government. So same idea, they can review your business plans, provide you with information, blah, blah, blah. blah. So at the food center, yes, they're, they're gonna give that information to you as well. If you want something a bit more general, like business planning, business strat, you can go through the Women Entrepreneur Centers, okay? Okay, gotta work through some of these other questions. Does Do any of the facilities offer a gluten-free environment? Elena's saying no, Robin's saying no, Carmen and Michelle's saying no too. <laughs> well, there's a business development. However, we can help you find any co-packers or someone else that could offer that type of facilities, and we can help you develop the products in a different way or try to collaborate with these co-packers. Right. Like you're saying, a, a private co-packer. Correct. Correct. So, yeah. Okay. We've, had, we've manufactured gluten-free products before, um, but um, so typically when the product has been manufactured, we'll test for the gluten-free uh, for the gluten um, before, you know, the, the, the client sells their product, but um, not in a gluten-free environment, but we've done gluten-free products before. Yeah. Yeah. And so the difference there is a gluten-free environment is different from a consumer perspective, as opposed to a product that has no gluten in it. It's an important food safety distinction, correct? So that's correct. why Herman's Kate or the food centers, Saskatchewan Food Center, we can manufacture a gluten-free product, yeah. but not in a gluten-free environment. That's right. All right, so for being a gluten-free facility, you have to be certified on that. We're not certified on that, on any allergen, but at the same as a Saskatchewan Food Development Center, we do can make, and we have made a lot of gluten-free products. Yeah, 
And I'm guessing everybody has this kind of like the same in the same situation. Yeah. Robin, go ahead. I'm just going to jump in that we all have expertise that would be able to help with formulation, um, but we don't have the certification in our in our facilities to maintain that standard. Yeah. And and, and Beth, would, Beth, sorry, go yeah. ahead. That would be the same for the Leduc facility as well. Yeah. Awesome. And Betsy, to answer your question, I mean, essentially, yes. Like, you know, if, if there's an allergen, then you sh if it's a known like you should mark the allergen. If you're saying it's a gluten-free product manufactured in a facility that contains gluten, you know, that's that's how it is, and that is okay, you know. So, but yes, you can't make any claims that are untrue. <laughs> um, Saskatchewan. Does the center offer encapsulation services? Um, not in not in large scale production. I mean, we do have an R and D scale. Uh, we have a flu bed dryer that does micro encapsulation, um, and that's through our ingredient uh, department, but uh, not for um, for retail or yeah. Okay. Um, thank you. Um, can I just jump in about the management center? Sorry for encapsulation. Um, we can do encapsulation in our spray drying process. Uh, yeah, with a carrier um, alongside fish oil. That typically we've done that before. Great. Colleen, if you're still on the call, which I think you are, um, hopefully you heard that. So Manitoba can provide more support in encapsulation. Uh, does anyone have a freeze dryer? <laughs> Robin, Elena, no. Says no. So we can help you find one. And Robin is one of the options, but we don't have one. Michelle, what about you? So we do have one in our, our product development laboratory for product development process evaluation. Um, we don't have one in our pilot plant where companies could manufacture for sale. Okay. Uh, got a few more here. Okay, for the Leduc incubator with respect to sweets, can you provide a couple examples of the way to use the suites and various tools, equipment available. Yes, I should have said it is BYOE, bring your own equipment. So most of the suites are empty. Uh, companies, when they're looking to go in there, they're going to be bringing their equipment with them to manufacture that specific product. We do have a couple suites where there is equipment inside of them that we cannot move out, just the, the nature of the size. We have one that has a very large oven inside and a spiral freezer. But for the most part, companies are bringing their own equipment, setting that suite up to, to match their manufacturing needs. Which is really nice. Yeah, I don't know if that answers the question. What was the second half of and how do they utilize it? Yes, yeah. Like you know, examples of who's kind of, in, what kind of products are being processed. Yes, yeah, so companies that have been in there are currently in there are some meat processors. Uh, meat processors have installed their own smokehouses, brought in their own equipment, and they're manufacturing uh, value-add meat products. We've had bakery companies in the past utilizing the facility. Uh, we have one right now that is doing, um, actually, Siwen Foods. They are doing um, a little, a little dumplings, like a Chinese gyozo. Um, they manufacture that out of the facility right now. Awesome. Thank you, Michelle. Um, someone asked a question. What about fulfilling food certification requirements? Do you help with that? I think yeah. that food safety or food, food, yeah. Well, at the food at the Saskatchewan Food Center, I mean, we have a food safety team that helps with um, with you know certain certifications and food safety plans and that sort of thing. But when you're coming into process at the food center, uh, we have our these certifications, kind of an umbrella for for you to come into process, and it's under that those certifications. Um, clients are usually um, you know, they go through a little bit of a training at the beginning before they start the process in, in terms of good manufacturing practices. But you know, I mean, one of the one of the important and vital things in, in, in terms of using the food centers is that because we have the certifications, the client themselves don't have to uh, go through that. Exactly. Yeah. And we well, can help with the manager of the food center with companies uh, with process and program validation um, for gaining or maintaining um, certifications. Awesome. 
and at the Food Process Development Center in Alberta, so we would help those companies that are working at one of the facilities. Um, we're not supporting companies on their certification journey if they're not working with us. Okay, so if they have their, if they're trying to build their own facility, you wouldn't. Right. Okay. okay. Carmen, does Erin do that here? If mm -hmm. someone has their own facility, okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, she'll do on-site visits. Um, she'll provide recommendations for, you know, for uh, any sort of food safety plan or HACCP plan, yeah. Perfect. On our end, we don't do any certifications, but we can definitely help to look into the information that is required by the client. Uh, certifications usually are a very lengthy process and the client needs to be, like the, the or the client or the person who is hoping to get these done, there is a lot of back and forth and it takes time. So it's kind of like hooking you up with the right person showing you the right websites or what do you need to comply in terms of um, uh, say, um, regulations and things like that as a guidance, but then pretty much it would be your, like the, the person, sorry, the client's own team who will carry forward with the task. Yeah. So you'll provide the consultation, just not the execution of. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Great. Anything else on that point? No, okay. But to Carmen's point, uh, yeah, that's exactly why you would work with a co-packer or co-manufacturer is so that you don't have to do those certifications um, and that the, the center itself has them on your behalf. Uh, the next question, a few more here. Um, is there a minimum to fill uh, for jars? Um, it's a honey company that's asking the question. They're a startup. So basically she's asking, is there any, is there a minimum to fill jars? Carmen, you want to start? Uh, we don't, we don't have a minimum. Um, I mean, but obviously ours is a daily rental. So if you're manufacturing for the day, you're paying the same amount if you're going to be do 500 jars versus, you know, 2000 jars. So um, it's, it's, I guess it's just whether or not um, it's worth it to do that minimum. For the client or for the food center? For the client, because you're paying the same fee for that exactly. day rental. Yeah. Yeah. So, sorry, I just was going to say that when I was talking about finding, figuring out your market, you know, potential and clients and volume, that's going to help you determine, Katie, what, what the minimum, what the maximum should be for you. Because like Carmen said, there there is no minimum. It's a pilot plant, so it's meant to test, right? So... Uh, Michelle, what about you? That would be the same, but the cost of utilizing the space and the facility is going to really be setting your minimum. Um, at some point, if you're not running enough product, it's going to be cost prohibitive for you to make any money off that run. So, Exactly. Robin, any comments there? We're not currently offering any bottling services. Um, at the center, so yeah, but a great, good answers from both other centers around looking at um, the economies of scale and are you ready for the scale that they can provide? Elena, any comments? We are not co-packers, we don't offer that service. We, when we do our trials, we can make a small set of samples and for bottling, we can do that. It's an open, it's a closed system, so it would have to be hot filling, uh, but we can make a certain amount of samples of hand. We don't have a minimum, uh, the maximum would be depending on the size of the bottle and type of the product. We have a kettle that it has a capacity of 125 liters, and anything below that, or a couple of batches, we can do. Uh, but again, it's just kind of like a samples kind of thing size. It's not for production. Got it. And that that's the big difference, you know, is the piloting and the the scientific development, the technical development of your product is different than <clears throat> the standardized commercial like the standardized production for saleable products is different so when you're you may find like exactly like this you know you may work with manitoba to develop the the product and then you'll have to go to a private command or, or a, you know the food center or leduc to actually manufacture for sale okay so one of the questions we had was does the manitoba center do that bottling services and we answered that question that's a no Correct. Unless it's correct. right in saying that we do beverage formulation and we have a UHT ultra high temperature pasteurizer that we can use um, to show you what a shelf stable formulation would look like. Um, and samples from our uh, food lab, it's permitted. So they can um, go out for test marketing, um, but not for sale. So 
So you're absolutely right that from there you would take that formulation and transfer to another facility. And that's where we work with our business development team to help you find a co-packer, whether it's going to be in Manitoba or we have a, um, a, a list in the library of co-packers we maintain for across the country as well. Right. Awesome. All right. Well, I think that's all the questions. There's just two more that I'm going to quickly answer before we log off on the call. And, and maybe, you know, um, the panelists, if you have some answers for this, that'd be great. So I had talked about or at the beginning of the presentation, we, we can't talk about non-disclosure, confidentiality, all that stuff. Um, a participant is asking, you know, is there anything to keep in mind regarding what to share and what not to share with um co-packers that you're trying to develop relationships with? Yeah, that's a very common question. Most of our clients are small uh, entrepreneurs, and I will always advise them to have some legal advice because usually when you provide a co-packer with your formula, you want to make sure that this formula is not used by anyone else for any other clients and that they don't leverage on this formula. So that's your know-how, right? And they might be able to help you adjust the process because it has to do with their equipment and their capabilities and the size and all that. And that's okay, but that would have to be part of your own agreement with them that yes, that process might, you, you need to see the legal part of it, like what it does belong to you and what sort of it belongs to them. But in terms of formulation and all of that, definitely uh, you have, you, you would like to protect yourself and it's easy to, not do so when you don't have the legal advice. So I would highly encourage them to have a stronger team or a good advice on this. I'll just put a link in the chat. Um, in our business pathways, we do have a resource for companies to take a look at that walks through. It's only a two page, it's very high level, but it talks about some of the things to consider when you're looking at entering a relationship with a co-packer. Um, to cover yourself and and to make sure you have a, a good experience. We find companies um, it should talk amongst their network because you hear about who's a good co-packer and who's potentially um, has some challenges. And especially with looking at the cost of ingredients, it's really important to know your product and your process very well. What are your yields? How much raw material goes in? What comes out? Um, because everyone's looking um, to ensure that they're making money through the process. So it's really important that you... Um, ensure your product quality is going to be the same standard coming out of that co-packer, um, even with challenges in terms of ingredient costs. So you take a look at that resource if you want. Um, and I think any of the centers would be able to help you um, understand your product in a way that you could go to a co-packer with confidence that you're going to get the right product. Perfect. Thank you, Robin. Michelle, any additional comments? We, we too have some resources um, and I can pull up the links and add them to the chat as well. Um, links of information for the co-packer and the co-packee and things that you wanna be considering if you're offering that service or you're asking for that service. So I'll, I'll add those links into the chat as well. All right, well, I think that wraps up the majority of the Q and A. The last question we have is, um, the person is asking if there's any way to showcase companies and locations looking for investment. And um, I'll just say that probably, you know, going to networking events and getting your business out there and getting your face out there is, is the first step if you haven't done that. Same same idea with co-packing, um, with financing and lending and investment, it's relationships, right? So, so you're not going to meet an investor at an event and they're going to be like, yeah, I'm going to invest in your company tomorrow. It, it is about a six month relationship timeline from the point where you initiate a relationship with the funder or a lender. And when, by the time you actually, they say, yes, get the check, get it going. So it is about meeting people, getting them to know you and your business and your goals and your personality and your character, your business acumen, your ability, your ambition. And then that kind of leads to, to the right kind of investment. But for the purpose of this question, yeah, like I, I don't believe any of the centers have any kind of networking event or investor thing happening, right? No, we don't. Uh, we don't anyways. But I mean, we love showcasing companies that we help that we've helped along the way and they're experiencing success in the marketplace. But, you know, um, client confidentiality, confidentiality is very, very key. We don't want to be um, promoting a client or showcasing a, a client product when, you know, maybe they don't want it to be known that they're manufacturing at the food center. You know, we have a lot of uh, clients that are, are um, you know, they're 
they're they they they're they're um they're happy with their success, but they don't want their competitors knowing that they're manufacturing with us <laughs> because you know they want to keep their success, right? So we when we 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 highlight, you know, client successes on our website. Uh, we ask for permission to do so. We uh, also highlight uh, company success on our social platform. We ask permission to do so. We have a display of, you know, of some of our client products in 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 our building when we do tours and stuff. And again, we ask them for permission to do so. So um, everything is is um, is very key on the co confidentiality of the clients. Yeah, Michelle. That would be very, very similar here as well. Um, we wouldn't, it would be if the companies came to us and asked if we could make some introductions, then we would extend introductions. We wouldn't provide companies that we are aware of those lists to an investor. Um, it, it really needs to come from the company seeking that, that connection. And, and similarly, as for Carmen, if we're like today, I shared a snapshot of companies that are working at the center they've agreed that that information can be promoted because as Carmen said, some companies don't want that to be known where they're manufacturing out of. So, yeah. Great, okay, perfect. Um, and, and you know, same thing with the women entrepreneur uh, agencies, they, they have probably, a, they have funding, those agencies have funding um, for women entrepreneurs. And then they also work with other lenders, other investors for contribution lending, right? Because usually in food manufacturing, it's a bigger sum. It's $150,000 isn't necessarily gonna get us anywhere really when we're trying to grow. So there are usually three or four different funders, lenders that you know invest in you after you kind of had some traction in the market. So with that, um, I'm gonna thank the speakers. What a full morning of, if I wasn't expecting so much information. So that's really great. I thought I knew everything about, about um, the four centers that are on the call today, but obviously I don't. So it was really amazing. Thank you so much for your time, putting the, the content together. Um, we will send out the recording and uh, we'll also send out the contact information for the speakers, for the panelists, so that the attendees what, if they need to reach out to you, which I'm sure you they will, um, they can just have a direct line to you. All right. Thank you so much again, Carmen, Michelle, Elena, Robin. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks everyone. everyone. Have, have a great, great day. day. Bye. Good evening. Bye -bye. Good afternoon. <laughs> Good afternoon. Yeah, go have some lunch. <laughs> See you. Thank you.